In this video, I will be sharing one topic which I learned the best in our S305. In this subject, we have Bakod 6 chapters. Namely, Chapter 1 talks about Summative Assessment 1, Planning and Implementing Classroom Tests. In Chapter 2, it talks about Performance Assessment. Chapter 3, about Portfolios, Paper, and Digital. Chapter 4, about Assessing Non-Cognitive Disposition and Skills. In Chapter 5, it's about assessment for students with exceptional needs. And the last chapter is about grading and reporting students' performance. So in these chapters, I chose one topic which I learned the best. Greetings, I am Janeline Ariel, a Bachelor of Technology and Livelihood Education. In this video, I will be discussing about Chapter 3, Portfolios, Paper, and Digital. Specifically, the topic, Advantages and Disadvantages of Portfolio Assessments. Portfolios were popular in the 1990s, but their use decreased because of the concerns about reliability and growing importance of large-scale accountability tests. They are making a comeback and exciting and engaging digital possibilities. This also increased scrutiny of basing teacher evaluation on students' academic progress. Now let's have the advantages of portfolio assessments. So first, this combines the strengths of performance assessments, which a continuous record of achievements of the students. Second, this engages students in self-evaluation and reflection, which leads students to get goal-setting, which also encourages and supports critical thinking. Another one also, portfolio involves students in collaborative assessments. Also, this integrates assessment with learning and focus on self-improvements and enhances students' motivation. This also contains examples of students' work which reinforce the importance of performance assessments and provide evidence of learning for diagnosing learning difficulties, providing individual feedback, and explaining progress to parents. Portfolios also are flexible, especially the digital ones. Now let's have the disadvantages of portfolio assessments. So basically, the scoring is time-consuming and not consistent because the criteria are too general and raters are untrained. Another one, this need time and resources to design, to review and score, to get trained or training. Another one, this is a potential for limited generalization. It is because evidence of competency is hidden for each learning target being evaluated. Requiring students to have their own portfolios in class will help them know more about the things so they can still improve. It may cost money to create one, but what matters is the improvement it will give you when you make the portfolio. So those are the advantages and disadvantages of a portfolio assessment. Online classes is not as easy as it was during face-to-face -face classes. We have to exert a lot of efforts for us to provide the requirements or the task that we need to finish. Nevertheless, I still happen to learn a lot of things, a lot of lessons in this subject. Thank you so much for listening. Again, this is Janeline Ariel. Bachelor of Technology and Livelihood Education. Please hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you will be updated on the uploads posted in this channel.